In this week's video, I will go over step-by-step -step instructions on two demonstrations that I guarantee will put you in the running for a top prize in your own science fair. And how do I know this? Let's just say my kids had some recent experience. My daughter's experiment was scientifically proving the best way to purify water, and my son's demonstration was on electromagnetism and he made a fully functioning electromagnetic levitating train. In full disclosure, since this was a judged competition, I didn't help my daughter in any way, shape, or form. My son, however, entered the non-judge portion of the competition, and since most of these contestants were in the second grade, of course I helped him out a little bit, as did most parents. To begin the video, let's go over my daughter's water purification demonstration that won first place. All you need is a dirty water source and several different purification methods. She collected the samples in different jars, one for each purification method she was going to perform. And then we returned to the house to perform the experiment. She boiled one sample of water and that was going to be the control. She would then go on to purify the water samples using the manufactured guidelines on all sorts of different techniques ranging from tablet purifiers to filtration devices and even an ultraviolet light. Admittedly, the UV light purification method was really cool, even if it was just because it looked like it was from the future. After the results were done, she would then pipette a drop of water on a slide and observe under the microscope documenting how many particles she could see per high power field. We've done a review on this microscope that we've used before. I think it's a great homeschooling tool to have in your armament and I'll leave that video link in description. At its core, this demonstration is actually a rather simple one. Once she counted the number of free floating particles, it was just a matter of graphing the results. A second form of experimentation she used was using a laser microscope to also visualize the free floating particles when you projected the image onto the wall. Because I promise you, if you bust out a laser microscope in a science fair, you're going to get all kinds of attention and you're just going to blow the judges away. The reason my daughter was aware of this as being a possibility because we did an experiment with a laser microscope about a year ago, and I'll leave a link in that description if you want to go down that route. I promise you though, a laser microscope at the science fair? Instant win. What's great about this experiment is it answers a simple yes or no question, which is really what a great science fair demonstration should do. Can artificial purifiers clean water better than boiling? And if so, which technique is the best? With this question, you can create a hypothesis, perform an experiment, collect your data, analyze your results, and make an excellent looking science fair poster. Basically, it hits all the check marks of performing the scientific method, ensuring this is a great science fair demonstration. Now let's turn our attention to the electromagnetic train. There are a few websites online and even a YouTube video that shows you how to do it. Unfortunately, they don't really demonstrate how painstakingly difficult it can be to balance the train on top of the tracks without it falling to the side because the magnetic strips on the train and the tracks have to be perfectly aligned. However, it took us a few days and a few different setups, but I think I found a way to make this a little bit easier. Mistake number one for us and the one that you need to avoid is we began this demonstration trying to set it up on cardboard. In my mind, I thought it would be lightweight and easy to transport from our house to the science fair. Tip number one, don't waste your time on cardboard. You are definitely gonna need a hard and level surface. So go to your local hardware store, save you some time and buy a two by four. You're also going to need some barriers or guardrails for your train. Because once you get it to levitate, it's just naturally going to want to collapse to the side and the barriers will prevent that from happening. And I'll get to more about the barriers in just a minute. Another mistake we made was going to our local arts and crafts store and buying magnetic tape. The magnetic tape that we purchased, which was the only option they had at the store, was garbage. It didn't have nearly the magnetic force to levitate the train. If you can find magnetic monopolar tape, buy it. But we couldn't. We ended up using multipolar magnetic tape that we found off Amazon. We were able to get it to work and I'll show you how. I'll also leave a link in the description below. Next, you're going to want to use a small light piece of wood for your train car. Balsa wood would be perfect. We ended up using a car from a children's woodworking kit that we got from Lowe's. And then next, you're going to want to cut some of the magnetic tape to length and line it up on the edges of your train car. Next up is the hardest part. The longer the track length, the harder it's going to be to maintain the precision lining up the magnetic strips on the track and your train car. It's natural to want to build a four, five, six foot track length for your car for the demonstration purposes. Trust me on this one, two to three feet is all you're going to want to do. Just enough to show that it levitates and goes back and forth. If you go longer, you're going to regret it. The track tape has to essentially align perfectly with the car's magnetic tape. You can see me here just using the car essentially as a guide for the placement of the track tape. If you find that once you have your track strips down and you place the magnetic car on top and it is attracted instead of repelled, then you're going to have to change the polarity of the magnetic tape. This is where if you were able to find monopolar tape, you can skip this step. But if you found multipolar tape, which is probably what you've got, all you have to do is take a rare earth magnet and slide it along the length of the track. That's going to change the polarity from multipolar to monopolar and it will work just fine. After you do this, if you find your car still attracts, turn the magnet over and do the whole process again. 
Once you have everything in place, you'll notice that the car will repel but still want to attract or collapse to the side. And that's because there's just going to be some inevitable imprecision in the magnetic placement and the attractive forces. And that's why you're going to need the railings to keep that from happening. We basically just used 90 degree plastic edging that we purchased at Lowe's and nailed it into place. And once that is in, you're all set. Your magnetic train should levitate going back and forth with ease and it is a really impressive demonstration to see. Either of these experiments will blow the pants off any judging panel at any science fair at any grade level. If you show up at a science fair with these experiments and somebody else wins first place, then just tip your hat because these experiments are awesome. Have fun at your science fair everybody. Good luck and I'll see you next time.